I don't think saying goodbye in any context is an easy thing, especially if said goodbye is meant to last forever. Those, no doubt, are the hardest. Yet, this is something that has had a long time coming, and that is saying goodbye to some comics I have kept with me through college. After this video is put up, I will be taking down both Lucy's Manor and Sung Hollow Song on Tapas. Granted, they'll always be on my DeviantArt, but they will no longer be continued. This decision dawned on me over a few weeks ago as I jot down the script for this video, and despite being one of my most difficult decisions, in the end, I feel it's needed. Allow me to go back and regale you the tales of how these stories, or making comics in general, came to me. By the time I hit 7th grade in middle school, or intermediate school, or junior high school, or lower secondary school, whichever you prefer to call it my peeps who are not from the states, around that time I made my first comic called Rosudo Suki, which 12 year old me would be able to tell you exactly what it means, but nowadays, uh, nah, it's been far too long. I remember making the cover, chapter art, a first few pages in, and then nothing. Eighth grade eventually rolled around, and there I created another story called Wingling, something where I made a cover for some characters, but never really went further with. Supposedly the story was to be something like the manga Absolute Boyfriend, but like instead of a robot, it's like wishing upon a star and then the dude was actually a comet. I have no idea. It was romance driven, I suppose, but like I said, 12 year old me would be able to tell adult me, but I have lost a lot of that knowledge of what it was supposed to be. Sometime before the start of high school, but later in my eighth grade year, I made another story that dealt with the devil and his 13 sons or something, and that was called Vamp. Same thing, cover art, chapter art, a first page, and then nothing. So, Rosuda Suki, Wingling, and Vamp never took off, and by the time I was in high school, these stories had faded into obscurity. It was the start of this terrible habit where I'd make a comic to something, fan-made or non, and then poof, drop it. I made a fan comic of Har Harvest Moon before my college traditional one called New Start, but dropped that in, dropped that two pages in. Same thing with a Kingdom Hearts fan comic where the main plot was Sora and Kairi trying to get Riku a girlfriend. And <laughs> the more I talk about it, I actually remember I worked on a high school story called the Akatsuki Chronicles because I was and still am a complete Naruto dweeb. And I love it. Anyway, by the time of my late sophomore year, so 10th grade, I decided why not take all the fan characters I have made for other series, like Full Metal Alchemist and Dean Angel and, and all of those other characters out there that I've made in the past, and just throw them all together in one universe? And thus, it created Double D Lucy, which, haha, teenage brain, this story follows a double character with double D bus size, perfect, high school setting too, double perfect. Well, that story, like the others, wasn't exactly going anywhere. It didn't have a whole lot in terms of direction, plot, character development, all the subtle nuances that go into a story to make it good. Yet, unlike the previous three, I didn't want to give up. I decided to refine it instead of scrapping it. And that's when I changed Double D Lucy into the Aki Genius. <laughs> Back when Aki looked much more plain. I actually stole him from a side romance story I wanted to make called Adolescence, but that just faded into obscurity real quick. Certainly was a more of a spur of the moment thing. Yet I came across another problem. There was too many characters. At the time, I wanted the Aki Genius to really have these 
Naruto levels of story with this grand and huge cast. However, not all of them were fleshed out, and I didn't know where they'd all fit, and I didn't know what the plot was or how to drive the story. Which, fun fact, if you're making a story, here are three easy steps to ask yourself what will assist in fleshing out your character. One, who is my character? Two, what does my character want? Then three, what can I do to try and stop them from getting it? Now, I'm not able to take that type of advice and say that I was the genius behind those amazing three steps. I need to figure out who said this, who quoted this, but they're awesome and they're fantastic. Anyway, that being said, I began to trim and shave off the characters that were important to the story of the Aki genius. By the time I graduated high school and started college, the story went another title change and it was then called Lucy's Manor. At first, I tried making it in black and white with a manga program for my sister, but it just, that wasn't going so well and I just didn't, I just, I couldn't figure out or learn that program so well. So. I didn't really get far with it, but then the second year of college, I suddenly made yet another story, Serenade to Me, all the while balancing two fan comics of Harvest Moon New Start po and Pokemon Perseverance, as well as Lucy's Manor. Ah yes, I can confidently say those were the heights of my DeviantArt years. I uploaded constantly when I was in college, all the way until I graduated, and after that, well, not so much. Lucy's Manor, I intended to make a story with a supernatural premise. Dealings with the devil hidden within a slow burn romantic subplot with the protagonist Aki while he tries to navigate a very stressful college life. On the other hand, Serenade to Me, which now has a title change and is called Song Hollow Song, I intended to be more fantasy based with all sorts of mystical beings and creatures that lived with humans who are unaware that such things exist. This was intended to be an apocalyptic story, tragedy based, and indeed would have some romantic subplots following the main protagonist, Zane, who was a mystical being himself. Yet in all that time, from their creation, my college graduation, till now, which is basically five plus years later, only minor tweaks and changes have been added. I certainly invested more time into improving the characters and polishing them, but both stories lacked a pivotal factor, which is number two in the three things to help create great characters. I had no clue on what they wanted. Besides Aki, who had a set goal, everyone else didn't really have something that would drive them to do things that they did. And even though Aki had a goal, he was a very reclusive character, and he lacked the ability, in my opinion, to drive the story or keep the reader engaged, so I was at a loss. Both stories were a slow burn in plot and their subtleties. At first, I was really passionate about making such a story, but as I grew, I realized it wasn't even hooking me, despite all the climatic points I had planned for years. Yet, why did I continue to press on? That was due to the fact that I felt if I scrapped it, I would be reverting to my terrible old habit of giving up, not seeing something through to the end. The bad habit of saying I'll do something, then it ends up never becoming so, or just ends up as another unfinished project. I just so stubbornly clung onto these two stories that I didn't want to admit that they had long since expired. They were no longer the stories I wanted to tell. And I adore the characters, but the world fabricated around them is just no longer something I want to invest my time into exploring. Issues with what will drive the plot aside, both stories were similar as they both had an underworld and the devil, you could say. Part of me felt if I gave up on these stories in particular, I would no longer be a comic artist. That by doing this, it was admitting defeat, and I'd now be washed up and done. <laughs> I, 
Uh, I gotta say, that type of thinking is mostly due to the fact that I fundamentally believed if I wasn't successful, quote unquote, by the time I hit my late 20s, I wasn't going to make it in life. And I honestly, I just I really hate that type of cultural and societal conditioning that if you don't make it by 30, you're unsuccessful in a washout. Anybody else feel like that? It just, it sucks. And furthermore, it, it really isn't true. I still have my whole life ahead of me to write and produce a story, and my life isn't going to end after I turned 30, and it's really crappy that so much has brainwashed us that this is the case. But anyway, ramblings aside, ah, the holiday season of early January 2017. That's when another idea hit me for a story. After I graduated college in 2015, I actually really got into the series One Piece. And as you can guess, I made a character for it, Suzume. I had a blast designing her, and personality-wise, she was the complete opposite of who I am as an individual. She had definable flaws, she was passionate, she knew what she wanted, and it wasn't long until she became such a strong, well-made character that she actually outgrew the fan story I originally made her for. So then, here I was, with this well-crafted character, and I knew... It was time to stick her into her own story. However, as per the three steps of creating characters, I was still missing number two. What does the character want? And certainly what she wanted in the fan story I put her in is much different than what she wants in, the, in this new original story I was going to put her in. So... Now, as to what Suzume wants, I'm not going to exactly say, but it's certainly something that won't hook the reader right away. And I didn't want to change her character, though, because it would change her two biggest flaws, one being anger and the other being stubborn. That's when I realized if I wanted Suzume to be a main character, she certainly can't do it alone. She wouldn't be the individual who would drive the story or keep the reader engaged. Thus, I made Spade her adventuring companion who is completely opposite of her and yet compliments her in certain aspects that I am not going to blab at this very moment. What Spade wants is crystal clear, and together with Suzume, he's off to obtain it. It's kind of interesting that as I created the troupe, its world, the lore, it just it came to me much more naturally after I had a clearer understanding of who my two main characters are, their backstory, what they want, and what will I do in trying to stop them from getting it. This story, this, it just felt much closer to my current storytelling capabilities, and I genuinely became excited to work on it. In fact, there were times I solely wanted to work on it and it alone. But then, I would stop. I became afraid that this story would go so far ahead I'd leave behind my other two original ones, which in a small sense did happen as I definitely have more pages of the troupe than both Lucy's Manor and Sung Hollow's Song. I didn't want to admit that these other two stories that I first had were just no longer my favorite, and I punished myself by forcing myself not to get too far ahead in the troupe so that I could allow myself time for the other two to catch up. And that was a huge mistake. By forcing my eagerness to draw and write more and flesh things out for the troupe, and by making that come to a grinding halt, I in turn prevented working on any future pages or concepts. I just didn't want to acknowledge it, though. I didn't want to admit that my original two stories from high school through college were no longer something I wanted to work on. And I was scared that scrapping these stories would mean I was a failure in turn. My early mid-twenties certainly sucked as my thought process wasn't as mature as it is today. I continued to put these stories on the back burner and slowly the troop was another story that might have become like the first two, just put on the back burner. Until now, until today. Where with a heavy yet somehow relieved heart, 
I feel I can put these two stories down, and maybe someday the characters will come back in another story. A different story, a better story. But until they do, they'll have to wait. I'm ready to give all my focus into this one original story I am so eager and I'm so excited to tell. Sure, I have perseverance on the side, but as a fan comic, that's something I get to mess around with. Having my own characters in the Pokemon universe is motivating enough, which is why I continue to work on perseverance from time to time. But this one, for the first time, I feel like I have found a story I am so pumped to hash out, and I just, I really hope you guys are excited too. Lucy's Manor and Song Hollow Song may no longer be in the cards for me as something to complete, but without the lessons they've taught me, the practice they gave me, I don't think I would be such an amazing storyteller as I am today to create something like the troop. So, to those stories I say farewell, and thank you. To you guys though, Gotta say thank you all so much for watching. Tell me in the comments below what are some of your tribulations you've had to go through, whether it be making comics or anything else you felt you needed to quit while you were ahead. Please be sure to give this video a like as it really helps me out and this channel. And don't forget to subscribe to hear more amazing content from me. But until next time, remember everybody, be awesome, be you. Akemi, out.